At the end of the last video, Rach and I had finally finished crossing the Trans-America Trail together, and before that was of course Alaska and crossing Canada in the winter together. Over Christmas we'd both flown back to the UK to get some vaccinations, but it was now February and I was flying back to the USA solo, with Rach flying out a month later. This was the start of our solo journeys from the USA to Argentina, with the plan to meet up along the way when fate decided it. So without further ado, let's start the chapter of this series, where I ride solo. So with Rachel and I now riding separately, I headed south from Oregon solo and down the west coast of California. Nothing too much happened on the road to report, except I did stumble upon a quest. So riding down Highway 1 on the California coast, spot someone on the road, and stop and have a look, and it's Jessica Gienemann's purse, who lives in Georgia, which is a fair few thousand miles away, so um, I'm going to try and get it back to her somehow. I don't know. <laughs> I did some sleuthing and found the purse contained a plane ticket back to Georgia the following day from San Francisco, and also noted that the purse was on the southbound side of the road. I also found her on Facebook, but she wasn't replying to Facebook messages, so I decided to ride southbound with it towards San Francisco for 300 miles with it prominently in my left hand. Thus, if she started driving north to find her purse, she would spot me riding in the other direction and chase me down and collect it. She looked friendly, so I assumed she wouldn't just run me over. Many miles were ridden, with only a brief stop to look at the elephant seals, which I also took Jessica's purse to see. Eventually, contact was made via Facebook and we agreed a place to meet and the purse and plane ticket were reunited with their owner. <laughs> Hi. I film everything. <laughs> this is so funny. So there you are. Thank sure. you so much. <laughs> no worries. That's really nice. Awesome. If we just pretend that this is the first time. What's up? <laughs> Cool. Thank you very much. <laughs> Thank you very much. With the universe a slightly better place, I got a hotel for the night and carried on the ride in the morning. My journey down the east coast was some nice riding, but not too eventful. Except, of course, for a bit of touristic sightseeing. I then resumed the ride down to LA, sampling the lovely views, smooth roads, and giant fingers in the sky. Once I got to LA, I stayed with a very good friend called Scott who very kindly let me stay at his place while I edited YouTube videos. This is the outro for episode 5 about Canada being filmed in Los Angeles, which is the time period for episode 11, which is now having its voiceover recorded in England. Oh dear, I've gone cross-eyed. Anyway, Scott and I had some good fun together, and I even got to tick something off the bucket list of mine, firing a 357 revolver and a Beretta 9mm in opposite directions, tilted sideways. <laughs> Guns down range. That's hmm. one of the coolest things I've ever done. <laughs> <laughs> Anyway, my main job in LA was to edit videos for you guys, but the editing was interrupted by a rather important Skype call from someone doing their first day solo riding. So you nearly made it then? It really, really nearly made it, yeah. Like nearly 200 miles in a day. <laughs> obviously, obviously 90 does not like it. No, no. We'll get your bike working. Rachel's engine had ground to a halt and completely locked up the back wheel, so via Skype I attempted to diagnose the fault with the help of Rachel's excellent camera work. Can you see that? Uh, yeah. Yeah, that. See what you're... When you ask me what I can see, sorry, what am I looking at? The flywheel. I was looking at your face then, it was the wrong camera. <laughs> <laughs> I thought I was pulling a really funny face because I was giving it a real good go then. Yeah. Right. The way that it was... Yeah, so I can see the flywheel now. So I didn't realise that's pointing in my face. Um, right. <laughs> you are pretty, yeah, nothing, so it's okay. Nothing, uh, take off the kickstart, take off the foot pegs, undo every 8mm bolt that runs around the outside of the casing. And we have nothing. That yeah. is it. Yep, your big end has gone. It is dead. Yeah, it's either try and, try and source lots of engine components, or the most sensible option is a new engine. Engine, yeah. Okay, so at least I'll have a nice fresh one. I've learnt a lot as well about all this mechanism. <laughs> yeah, that's how you learn. That's how I've learnt it all. <laughs> so, I think I'll be alright, but I'm just glad it didn't 
engine throw me off and break any bones. Yes. But yeah, what engine? <laughs> it did quite well, really, didn't it? <laughs> yeah. So after 25,000 miles, Rachel's 200-pound engine had thrown a big end bearing, which meant it was time for the 25,000-mile service. Buy a new engine for 200 quid. It even comes with a new spark plug. And Scott lent me his van to drive 400 miles north to pick up Rach from Sacramento, where our good friend Ken, from the Mongolia trip in 2013, had taken Rach to in his pickup truck. So you thought you'd got rid of me, Ken. <laughs> yeah. With the precious cargo collected, Rach and I went to see the elephant seals together, which had now increased in numbers. At least Rach got to see the tourist attractions, even if it wasn't the way she planned. Once back in LA, Rach and I stayed with a really cool guy called Dan Jacket, who let us use his garage to fit the new engine in Rachel's bike, and she was off again on her solo travels. Thank you very much. See you again. Love you, Dan. Although, they didn't stay solo for long. So Dan, you've just got off the phone. Uh, mm -hmm. Who was it and what's happened? Uh, that was Rachel. She's made about maybe four miles away and her chain flew off and jammed into the front sprocket of her engine. <laughs> Let's go pick her up. Shall we go rescue her? Yes. <laughs> we jumped in Dan's truck and heroically drove the entire four miles to go and collect our damsel who, as always, showed no signs of distress. The front sprocket, you know the two screws in the clip that hold it on? Yeah. They've gone, and the sprocket's worked its way off, and that's what's got the chain jammed, and then it's pulled the chain. Oh. Which is really, really weird. No screws, no clip. Nice to see you again. <laughs> <laughs> I couldn't believe it. I was like, you're fucking kidding me. We took Rachel back to Dan's, fitted the parts, and she was ready to try and ride solo, Again. Oh, What's the make it. for rescues? Sorry? The border. Uh, the border. The border. <laughs> Anywhere between here and Mexico, I'll yeah. come meet you. How, how many hundreds of miles did I drive to write, collect you the first time? Oh, uh, yeah. 400, uh, 800 round trip. <laughs> yeah. So, it's a 800 mile round trip is is the cut off so far that I'll do to rescue you. <laughs> well, good luck for the third time. <laughs> So, good luck for the third time. Yes. And, um, yeah, enjoy. Bye. You just wait here for a sec. What's happening? Hey! <laughs> <laughs> <Yay>. <laughs> <laughs> That's a better even <laughs> Goodbye. Again. <laughs> Fingers crossed. Oh, she's gonna make it this time. All right, well, let's um, let's get to work on my bike and replace the pieces that I've just given Rachel. <laughs> And it was also time to replace my headstock bearings, and the nut holding them in hadn't been undone since 1989. With the bearings done, 90 would soon be ship shape and ready to head towards Mexico and start playing catch up. So I am about a mile from the border into Mexico. I'm very excited, a little bit nervous. I hope they let me in. Um, it's absolutely roasting already. So uh, yeah, fingers crossed it'll all be all right and I'll be uh, eating fish tacos in a couple of hours. Wish me luck. <laughs> Rachel did indeed get in and a few days later, I did the same thing. Although it didn't exactly go smoothly. Yeah, I'm trying to find the um, immigration to get a visa. So I should just go across in Mexico? Yeah, you're already in Mexico. Shit. <laughs> so I've just entered a country illegally. <laughs> Let's see how well this goes. Central. 
Okay, so I follow you. Yeah. Cool. Thank you very much. The cops escorted me back to the USA border where I turned around and tried again. This time getting the correct paperwork. And this, ladies and gentlemen, was the start of the next chapter of my journey with Dave, the cowboy spider. Dave the Mariachi Spider and I were now at the top of the Baja Desert Peninsula in Mexico. And Rach was there too somewhere, doing her favourite thing, food. I have found a cave with some cheese in it. Uh, obviously the cheese doesn't grow in the cave, it's made in the cave. So uh, I'm going to head off and do some cheese tasting on Thursday. It's about 30 miles east of Ensenada. And then I will be heading south. Uh, I don't know where I'm going to stop or what I'm going to do, but I'll work that out as I go. But uh, so far so good, and um, yeah, I'm really looking forward to my Mexican adventure. It's uh, going to be good, I think. So uh, yeah, goodbye! Now, I wish I didn't have to, but I'm going to have to take 30 seconds to explain that Mexico isn't a dangerous country, just like I did for Iran in 2012, because people are easily brainwashed by the media, and I've already had people tell me I shouldn't let Rachel ride alone. Put simply, Mexico has a murder rate of 16 people per 100,000 people, Washington DC has a rate of 20, and my memory is a bit fuzzy, but I don't think we got murdered there. And the fatality rate of drivers in the USA is 12.9 per 100,000 people, and we didn't die doing that either. Yes, there are some hotspots for violence, but they rarely care about tourists, and Mexico is the same length as Europe. If someone gets abducted in Bulgaria, you'd have to be a moron to tell someone they shouldn't go on holiday in Belgium. <clears throat> anyway. Progress south was being made, and frequent stops in the shade to rehydrate and keep cool were nice, as was unexpected company. Fancy seeing you here. Good afternoon. <laughs> Do you want some ice cold water? Yeah. Ice cold water. Oh, lovely. So hot. <laughs> so humid. It was lovely through the mountains, and then suddenly it was like bang, oh, sticky. Oh, it was horrible. Oh, that's the best feeling I've had all day. <laughs> Have as much as you want. It was nice to see Rach again, but this was supposed to be a solo adventure, so I hit the road. But the temperature was stiflingly hot, which meant after a few hours, you had to stop in the shade again. <laughs> Let it be noted that I'm always sat down and she appears. Rach and I hung out for a bit before we went our separate ways again, and I rode off, admiring the cacti. And as I'd never seen them before, I decided to go and see them up close, which went as well as can be expected. Not good. Which one of you bastards was it? You, wasn't it? Or you? I should probably fix this tire. First, my beer. My in case of puncture beer makes every puncture better. It uh, takes your mind off what's going on. That you're miles from civilization. Nobody knows you're here. Literally, nobody knows I'm here. I have no cell service. I have no emergency beacon. I've got a puncture, and I've just got cactuses and a beer for company. So, um, yeah. Is it really? I'm gonna go fix this puncture. Cool, cheers. So I did a little bit of this, and a little bit of that. You can't do this filming one-handed. <clears throat> yeah. With the puncture repaired, and me also finding out which cactus fucked me, it was time to screw the camera on the tripod and carry on moving. But this time, I decided to follow the route of the bull-bashing Baja 1000 off-road desert race. This route actually had the potential to be very dangerous. It was very remote and it was now the height of summer. It would require real focus and precision if I were to avoid big trouble. I'm a mountain goat. Picking my way through the obstacles. Except that one. <laughs> Ooh! Dried out riverbed. These are normally pretty smooth. Power! Oh, a puddle! A puddle! 
two puddles. I think I've been in the sun too long. And a fully loaded bike with thin tyres and 10 horsepower really doesn't work well in the sand. Ah. I'll just move. The temperature in this valley was 48 degrees Celsius and progress was slow. So far it had taken 4 hours to do just 15 miles and the route was only getting more difficult. This wasn't good. This is not fun. I've got about 10 miles to go or so in this sand. I've got enough fuel, my main thing is water. And it's not actually just for me. I keep having to spray on the bike to cool it down because air cooled doing this uh, speed doesn't work. So uh, I have to keep stopping, put up the umbrella, which luckily every English person should have. But yeah, um, this sucks. I'm over cactuses now. Seen enough of them. And I haven't seen another human being all day. So I assume rescue is not worth thinking about. Fuck, it's hot. You've got to go, go. I have really, really, really had enough of sand. Please be the end, please be the end, please be the end, please be the end, please be the end. Oh. I'll take soil. Soil's good. The road! Tarmac! No more sand! Oh my god, this is gonna be good. Oh my god. It's here. I love you. Meanwhile, Rachel's day was decidedly more, well, Rachel-like. This is the life. <laughs> I could get used to this. Apart from all the people, <laughs> they can bugger off. <laughs> but this way is nice. <laughs> I was just eating in the cafe over there, I forgot to say. Cafe El Triumph. Am I useless? Yeah. Just eating in El Triumfo Cafe there, and the very kind owner is only going to give me a free sandwich. Look! Got turkey and cranberry, and nice salad, loads of other bits and pieces. Amazing! And to top it all off, he's also given me a bag of uh, like sweet goodies. So there's some cookies and another scone and some other little bits and pieces. So yay! What a charity case, eh? And this is a very good example as to why Rach and I had to travel separately. She'd be relaxing and enjoying the finer things in life, or being picked up and escorted around town by a Mexican biker gang, and I'd be subjecting myself to... Um... Um... Ow... That really hurt, that really hurt. I don't know why that happened. What's happening? Why have my handlebars just caught fire? Fuck, that plastic burns, really fucking burns. Holy shit, fuck, uh, ah, right, gotta go, shit. Just wanted to let you know how amazing my sandwich is. I don't usually say amazing a lot, but it really, really is good. Turkey, cranberry, cheese, nutty bread. Oh, lovely nut. Nom, nom, nom. <laughs> Thank you, Marcus, for the free sandwich. A little bird was just on my seat trying to eat it because it was food. That's really sad. I tried to give it some bread, but it, it left. Oh. Just, just excitement from the tree. Take the tree. Just couldn't stay away, could you? <laughs> really hurt. What are you doing? Oh no! You burnt yourself. You had fun? 
Uh, I've had an experience. <laughs> You've had an experience. I've had a lovely time, had some nice food, relaxed. <laughs> I've slept next to a pile of dead animals, then nearly died in the desert. Then my heated grips caught fire and burnt the skin <laughs> off my hands. <laughs> Uh, I've had a complete electrical failure on the bike. Oh no! I can only run it off of battery power if I connect up the generator, then everything blows up. Oh dear. But I've had a lovely time. I had a nice lunch, uh, coffee, <laughs> a relaxing ride through the cactus of the desert. Yeah. Oh, sucks to be you. <laughs> no, I'm sure you've had a lot of fun. <laughs> well, come in. Will do. <laughs> So yeah, we were having very different times in the Baja. For example, Rach would visit a massive cactus, and I would visit a massive coctus. In some regards, Rach and I are very similar, and in others, we're very different. It's just who we are. My ride was still biased towards off-roading as much as possible, and 90 and I were having fun, exploring the desert, and doing our own mini Dakar rally, complete with Fast and the Furious style camera work, featuring close-ups of gear changes. Well, as best as can be managed riding one-handed off-road with a single camera and monopod. Oh yeah. Now there's no easy way to show the next bit of footage. All through the USA people had warned us about how unsafe Mexico was, and now I had experienced it. Outside my hotel room one night, someone left me a toy monkey called Choyero as a memory of San Ignacio in Baja, Mexico in my front basket. This was truly horrifying. Coupled with the terrifying and hostile military checkpoints, I was beginning to think the Americans were right. Uh, from, um... Oh, uh... Guerrero Negro? Guerrero! 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 Thank you. Gracias! How the fuck am I supposed to say that? I've got a mint in my mouth as well. Rach and I were now travelling separately again and seeing where fate took us. For two days I bimbled along, alone through the desert, except for my interactions with military checkpoints, Hola. who didn't seem too interested in searching through my collection of cuddly toys. But after two days alone in the desert, I started to see things. I don't know if you can see this, but up ahead there was a motorcycle going in the same direction as me with what looks like a silver helmet. It might be Rachel because nobody else here wears helmets. However, due to our bikes being almost exactly the same speed, I won't be able to find out if it's her for probably half an hour. <laughs> I'll let you know. 20 minutes late there. Yep, still not caught up. One day. <laughs> this is the world's straightest road. This is ridiculous. Honestly, an other 20 minutes later. Oh, well, I'm currently doing 54.4 miles an hour. I'm guessing that Rachel is doing about 54 miles an hour. Honestly, this is ridiculous now. Oh, 54.6. Looks like the headwind has let off of it. <laughs> I've been spotted! The desert was still ridiculously hot, so I thought I'd cool Rach down a bit. Before heading off to La Paz. Okay, well, it's nice meeting Rachel again today. <laughs> I'm going to carry on. La Paz was in the south of the Baja and was where the ferry to the mainland left from. Rach and I spent some time there together before she carried on her journey Bye. and got the ferry while I stayed back and edited the monster 43 minute episode 6 of this YouTube series about crossing Canada in the winter. Ah, it's happened again. I'm editing a video in England in 2018, and in that video is me editing a video in Mexico in 2016, and that video was about me crossing Canada in winter in 2015. Man, I've been making these videos for a long time. And this is where this one ends. And I just wanted to record something on the outro of this one to say really sorry in the delay since the last video, but since the last video, uh, Rach and I have broken up. And as you can imagine, 
when you're trying to collect your thoughts and you know move on um, sitting alone watching videos of you and your ex-girlfriend happy together not exactly the best therapy so um, yeah uh, the reason I'm saying this is not just as an excuse as to why the video took so long but also it's to set the record straight Rach and I are not the Kardashians there is no drama we're still very good friends still talking um, and yeah basically it just didn't really work out and the reason I'm saying this now as well is so I don't get thousands and thousands of messages of people that just don't actually understand our relationship just going no man you need to marry her you know carry on um, never ever let her go um, the simplest way of putting this is that Rach and I went out for just under five years which is about 43,000 hours and what you're judging our relationship on is six hours of YouTube footage. So it should probably give you an idea of basically, trust us, we know about us more than you do because we are us. Um, and yeah, it does kind of suck that I've got to tell 100,000 people that we've broken up. Um, but there's a lot of reasons, even down to things as weird as if I get photographed being friendly with Scarlett Johansson in the future, I don't want guys sending photographs of that to Rachel going, uh, do you know that Ed's getting like friendly with her? Because they don't know we've broken up. So it sucks. But yeah, just as always, just a, just an open guy and just telling you how it is. Um... If you do send me a message or leave a comment below saying that I need to get back with Rachel, um, I will take that basically as a personal insult on our intelligences and I will either delete the comment or ban you um, because I just because you can imagine it's just going to be hundreds if not thousands of times over from everybody all assuming they know better than we do, which is weird. And that they're really bothered by our relationship with which suggests they probably need a hobby. Um, but anyway, no. Uh, anybody also insulting Rachel in the comment section, because Rachel is a very good friend of mine, uh, I will be getting the ban hammer out, and it will be swift, and it will be merciless. Um, so yeah, basically, just be respectful and polite, and, um, you know, just kind of accept that I'm telling you this rather than thinking that you know better than we do. Because, as I say, 43,000 hours together... We know better. Um, yeah, final one, if you really don't get it, it's like at the end of the last video, I said I'm done with riding around the world long distance now and I want to change and I'm going to do something else. I don't expect to get comments going, no man, trust us, you need to keep doing it forever. Never give up, ever. Just do it. Um, fuck is that noise? Oh. I'm back. That noise was a pigeon on the roof, but I've scared it away. So that was pretty much everything I wanted to say on that, and hopefully that's uh, sorted all out. Moving forwards, I'm actually getting an editor involved now to help me with these YouTube videos, because at the current rate of production, there's a large chance that I'll have broken up with my next girlfriend by the time that this series is finished. So I really need to get moving. Um, so yeah, we're going to be working together, and hopefully we can get a decent workflow. And yeah, really, really crack on and get this series done. Um, get the content out there and then move on to new things. But yeah, thank you very much for watching and I uh, hope you understand, hope you enjoyed the video and hope you're going to look forward to more. That is pretty much it. So cheers guys. Bye.